Welcome to part two, thank you Zig, of Starfinder, the Fragments of Eternity, session 28. It is the 22nd of July 2019. I am Ryan, the GM, and here are the players. Hello. I'm Nico, playing Zora, the vice captain. <laughs> Greetings, I'm Alex. I play Nix5, the android question mark mechanic. <laughs> It's pretty nice query. Troops? Uh, I am Colin. Oh. I, I play Michael Quint. He is the sneaky, spooky, undead space cop. Hi. I'm Zig. I, no, I'm Cal. I'm just, I do this every fucking time. Jesus. You are Zig and Cal. I am. Well, let's face it. Like, I'm, I'm basically playing myself. So, um. Zaloom. Hi. I am Callum <laughs> and Zig, and I'll be playing Callum and Zig, the mystical space rat and the kind of just not so mystical human boy. Yeah, that should be like second name Zalim. You're, like, pre you're pretty, you're pretty, you're pretty mystical, Callum. I give you that, right? You've got like Aww. unearthly musical talent. So there you go. There you go. Aww. Moving swiftly on. Yeah. Uh, Anywho, what what? Colin spoke all over was uh, me saying to Alex, it's actually pronounced query, that question mark part you added in, just so you know. I will get used to that. Yeah. <laughs> More you know. Uh, right, so, what's happening on the ship? Let's just jump straight back in. Um, ah, yeah. Got a dodgy engine room, but what's the captain up to? Because the captain's just kind of stood there if people have moved past you. I mean, I already tried to help it. Next, the last time it didn't work, so there's not even any point in me going there. So I'll probably just go make sure that Zig and uh, Alice ain't wrecking my cockpit. That, that's probably yeah. best protocol. Right, up you go. Is that Alice has killed Zig? <laughs> <laughs> now you can change too. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just daily my edgy boy and just start like mm -hmm. one it's in a corner. Yeah, so like Zig, I moved you to the actual captain's, like the pilot chair, even the pilot chair, because you were sat in like the co-pilot chair. Um, oh, right, yes. So I, I have moved you. Um, so I like to believe that Alice walked in and just like lifted you to the other seat. <laughs> oh, probably a bit more awkward. Um, she also has a uh, picked up the spork because I think that was still on the ground, right? Do you think you picked that up? Did yeah, you? it kind of fell on the ground, it, like. It wasn't stuck to her anymore when she died. Yeah. Like it fell to the ground as she fell. Yeah. yeah. So I think like she's like, ooh, and she picks that up and like sticks that, you know, in her hair, at the side of her head, and uh, you know, just is content with that being stuck through her hair. And then uh, that's when she like, picks you up, moves you to her seat, and sits down. And she's like, right, make it go, and just waves her hand over the controls. I think it's a good go. Mm. and start to attempt to do all like the pre-flight checks and yeah give me a pilot check yarp darp I think this Leot. is when this is when a uh, Zora walks in and the cockpit and leans against the wall oh dear oh dear I ah, nice okay. to see the both of you are trying to kill each other I would stagger jokingly wait Zig killed me or tried to. I'd be like, I'd, try, I'd, look, I'd look up and be like, yeah, sorry. I, I don't know what happened. But hey, you've got a nice new body to show for it, right? Uh. She kind of looks between the two of you, kind of a bit confused. And then um, this spork, I think, falls out over here. And she looks down at that. She's like, huh. Yeah, things are different. And she just side eyes. Zig as she leans down to pick the spork back up and then uh, she kind of keeps a hold of it and then she sits in the chair and she's like right okay so all those blinky things that are blinking that that's how I fly she just taps the control panel a bit <laughs> Zig would uh, go well this is how I fly and start flipping switches and yeah, and basically she's saying that, you know, all the lights that are on are on when she flies, so this seems good so far. Ah, good. Yeah, like that's the vibe she's getting. So like, she's like see all these things that are now blinking? They, they blink when I fly, so this is a good start. Yeah. So I could just 
continue. Yeah. So yeah, I think you you start to put up the ship. The ship has about twenty new warnings that pop up. Um, most of them say why, um, and it's lots of red text that pops up, just being like, "This isn't here. This isn't working. This is offline. This is broken. There's a breach here." You know, landing struts are wrecked. Like, just like sort of, you know, kind of like punching consoles and <laughs> just like t- switching off like alarms and stuff to try and just like get rid of the the noise that he knows everything isn't working, but. So, so normally what we you're really meant to do to is not be here. you're meant to go fix what's causing the noises, not just break the noise maker. We need to we need to go now. Where? Nix will fix it. It's fine. Where are we going? The camera now? is broken, Alice. And she just kind of smirks at you. And she, not me, Captain. And flick finger guns you. Yeah, you should be better than ever. I think I've gone back. <laughs> and she uh, narrows her eyes and looks at you like, I'm watching you. I guess we would get to Akaton. Go back to plan A. What's on Akaton? Um, places... Not here. Um, places we can hide, places we can get a ship repaired, places we can regroup. Places. Okay. Yeah, it's a big place. She just looks slowly kind of nods. Mm-hmm. Where you just? We just need to. Sorry, I was taking a, a drink. Um, we just need to find her feet. She has another switch. She just mm-hmm. looks. She just looks down at her feet. Doesn't say anything. I think. Um, what's like up to? Literally polishing his guns. <laughs> so are you in your room then? <laughs> yes. Um, what should I roll for gun polishing? Uh, profession. Profession? You're bounty hunting? I can yeah, see it. right. Prepping your gear. Gun polishing. Mm-hmm. In your room in private, yep. Yep, as one does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. <laughs> They're shiny. Ziggo to prove. Excellent. Guns are polished, everything is in order. I go, uh, you know... Uh, through the motions afterwards of of, of properly hiding uh, numerous <laughs> pistols, yeah. what have you. Um, I I suppose I af- after having done that, you know, I, that's where I'll have been at during these sort of ongoing conversations. And um, having done that, I will perhaps go and inquire about the uh, situation with Furler. So, is Cap still in control room? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I will go to the control room. The bridge. The bridge. The cockpit. Where is Furler? She's in the engine room. She's in the engine room. We're right, right, par- so. okay. parallel stories at the moment. I d- well, obviously, I don't know that in character, yeah. but I just wanted to know in, in college. You've just, be- you've just been told she's on the ship, then you just went through a room yeah. and polished your guns. When you've That's what one does. Yeah, uh, when you're finished <laughs> with that, like, you can move yourself from your room now and move yourself into the yep. cockpit. And then I will move myself to the cockpit. Yep, so you head in, and you just see Zig and Alice uh, playing at lights, then swiping away red windows that pop up on the computer screen, and then uh, they're turning volumes down on the system settings. I think I stare blankly at them for a minute. <laughs> yeah, but maybe um, like maybe you get that kind of weird, nostalgic vibe of um, Zig sat next to Emily. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Probably would be a fairly familiar scene in that mm-hmm. sense. It's probably the same type of moment that, like, the captain it probably should have seen the captain go, but I, you know, we're having this thought now. Um, um, and it's just that kind of weird vibe of, you know, because she is a lot similar, like, a lot kind of closer to Emlyn now, mm-hmm. weirdly. Yeah, than she was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, having sort of watched him for a second, uh, see. Probably quite quietly, like, he obviously is assuming other people know, but he, he nonetheless isn't necessarily going to advertise it. He's like, uh, Captain Furler is on the ship. He's like, how do you react to that? Good sigh. Waiting for Zig. Zig. Uh... Sorry, sorry, <laughs> I forgot I was muted. Um, so yeah, like yeah. you don't really have the best memories with Furler, do you? Really? No, they're up I and down and all over the place. That... You know that, like, really 
quick but that really like intense but sort of fleeting um adrenaline rush you get when like something like you see someone that really just gives you that negative vibe but they kind of just walk past you and then it goes oh Mm -hmm. it's kind of like that he gets that sort of like adrenaline all his hair is kind of standing on end Mm -hmm. Um, but he just I think he just um, kind of tries to dismiss it in his mind and carry on yeah Um, Obviously, uh, his his flighty. And Zora, how do you react to <laughs> Lyco's inquiry? I'd probably just sigh. <laughs> just like, yeah. Well, it's like she needs a lift off the station as well. Oh, everybody else, it's a lie. Yeah. Well, there's not much we can do for most of them other than hope that this is able to be resolved in uh, timely fashion, but. Uh, Furler is an interesting one. I'm surprised she didn't have another means of escape. You know. Mm. She's almost looks pretty panicked. Huh. Where is she now? In the engine room. I assume along with Nix. <laughs> you hope. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> um, I don't see any particular reason to be worried about what she's up to, but I can't shake the feeling that she's here for some other purpose. It seems... I don't know. I just don't think that we'd be her first and only board of call. Maybe she's dead. That's kind of eye roll and see it. Yep. I agree, but the last time I tried to get her off my ship, I got pinned to a wall. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think she's necessarily someone who we can uh, remove forces <laughs> from. But I am... Um, uh, I, th- I think we should... Keep a close eye on her, if possible. Would nod. Zig would like nod, but more to himself. Um, maybe not <laughs> visibly to. Mm. Trust Nix to do this. Very interesting timing, though, that uh, she comes on the ship. Hmm. They change. Seems, yeah. Open door to these people. <laughs> it's uh, I don't know. What precisely do you mean, these people? I mean, what do you mean? Talk a bit like the dragon, uh, but Hamani. His face, Hamani. Yeah. Uh, people just show up whenever they feel like. Really, <laughs> weirdly, I often forget his name as well. I don't know if it's just his <laughs> name's <laughs> almost memory, like memory proof. <laughs> you try and remember, but it's mm-hmm. Charles Dance. You know, it's. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um. <laughs> Hermione. Yeah. yeah. You should probably stick a revolving door in. Yeah. That wouldn't be so good for me, probably. <laughs> 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 so, what's the uh, what's the plan, Captain? <sighs> Try and jump out of here to Akaton, I suppose. But Akaton. Yeah. Well, Nick suggested that. It's a good place to lay low. Regroup. Yeah, I guess. Get rearmed. I'd like to know. Well, the thing, is, the thing is, I feel like we were probably early to learn about the situation on Absalom on account of my. Uh, Involvement with the Bowen Sages, but I don't imagine we were the first to know. Um, that information has got to be out there. Uh, so, if the impression is out there in the Pact Worlds that Absalom is falling, what do the other Pact Worlds look like right now? How is. Uh, you know, how is the pack holding up? Because uh, my concern is that without Absalom as a central nexus, order doesn't hold up. Not long. 
and I'm not saying I expect you know to walk into warfare and anarchy everywhere, but I do think that we have to be aware of the possibility that even just from the sheer distraction it's going to cause when the news gets out and becomes widely known, I'm pretty convinced that everyone who's been waiting for an opportunity to make some sort of move militarily or politically or whatever is, is going to probably even the criminal element is, is going to seize this opportunity, seize the uncertainty, the fear. That's what the vest could do, I would say. <laughs> that that is my next concern, Captain. Um, if the impression is out there that, and it certainly seemed to be in some places within the station, that uh, this, this was an attack from within by the uh, Eoxians, it was a double cross, then there may be some people who take the most extreme read of it and believe that the Pact worlds have essentially fallen into disarray, that there's open warfare between two Pact worlds, which would seem like an invitation for the Viscarium. Could be. Um, I'm not going to rule it out, but it's been a while since I've been in touch. I don't know what the situation is right now. So I think there's like a like a buzz at the uh, cockpit door and she just walks in and uh, she kind of just stands between two and she's like Zora and she's kind of like I think Zig would shove her shove her? Shove her! her. <laughs> I'd, I'd shove her! Shove her! I'd just go shove up her. and just <laughs> shove her! Down, down the shove stairs! Shove her out the door! <laughs> Get out! <laughs> Look at the Harlow's Force disc! <laughs> um, um, she had to write the sound of her voice. <laughs> which is weird because she has a really kind of fucking lovely sounding voice as well. It's very kind of mm. resonant. And she, um, she, uh, she says... The engine is... ready to jump us somewhere. And she kind of gives you a vague look, and then she kind of get, and you can see that she's kind of struggling to kind of like work out how to explain to you what is going on in the engine room. And then she uh, she says, "I'm assuming my repairs will buy me passage to wherever you go." Well, I mean, would you get off if we asked you? <laughs> <laughs> she smiles like and she. Like, you know, like one of those kind of tension-breaking smiles, and then she kind of looks at you and she's like, I'll definitely be leaving the ship once we leave Absalom. Put it that way. Um, Good. Let's get off this station. <laughs> agreed. Uh, I don't like how keen she is to get off the ship. <laughs> and then she says, uh, I, over I overheard are uh, you discussing Black Dragon, was it? Oh yeah. Yeah, you know. Was it Harlot Tail? But we assumed it was Harlot Tail ported the cell, didn't it? Didn't we? Mm -hmm. Did we? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah they so. Um yeah, you know the one that he's kinda teleported his into the bills of? Yeah, that time he's well, we just yeah. So much the dragon, but a bunch of dragons. Yes, yeah, so I believe um we should brought it to my attention that you were under you know, I wanted the, the drag queen apprehended, you were sent off to recover your young companion. She kinda gestures over to Zig. She's like, So I am very pleased to see your safe return, young Zig. I think Zig was like very tense, still like deliberately not turning around, and you just go, hmm, thanks. So, the Dry Queen. Yeah. I mean, she got turned into a puddle of ooze to buy, well, what we assume is, I would kind of point vaguely outside, out there. 
So he was turned to ooze by Absalom? No, like, I, I would say he was turned to ooze by whatever it is that's out there. The creature that's attacking the station right now. Well, keep in mind, you, you've just seen... Well, like we assume. I, I've got that, I mean... Captain, I don't think she knows. Oh? She's looking between the two like, is somebody gonna fucking tell me? Like, I, I would kind of snag on and say there's something what? that we know that the Great Bank Avatar doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of sighs and like her shoulders like kind of, like she rotates both of them a little bit like, you know, clicks them into place and she's like, I am not the bank. I am an agent for the bank. Same thing. I was <laughs> and quite I was frankly, I am trying to get us off the station safely. If For there's like something I need to know, please tell me. Let me... What is your understanding of the situation on the ground? She kind of like raises an eyebrow like, what the fuck? She's like, the station is falling apart. It's under attack. The corpse fleet have gone mad. And here we are. She kind of gestures vaguely between the two of like you, like between Zora and like I And here I am, stuck. In this, whatever this is. Have you been in communication with your superiors? If you have any. I really don't know how your church works. That's probably best. It stays that way. Why? The what should I know? Not gone mad. They're under attack. I can see that. By the city ship. Yep. They're under special? attack by, more specifically, uh, fellow. Well, the oxine isn't the correct term, is it? Uh, like you can see, she's like, you know, way more anticipatory, I guess. <laughs> a uh, a relic of the road before the catastrophic events that led to its current condition creature from presumably before the gap she's just staring kind of at you as if like incredulous is maybe a word you would use for her expression that same entity is responsible for what happened to the drow queen and uh, was also encountered by us previously under interesting circumstances, which uh, impressed upon me that it is not exactly what you would call a physical entity. It's she, more of a psychic entity. She kind of just like folds her arms in front of herself and she's like, So, you're telling me a relic from before the gap has appeared and killed the Dry Queen for you? Um, they didn't kill him for us. They had no interest in us. Why? If anything, I think it was actively hostile to us. Why would it um, kill the Drow Queen and not you that's, if you were there? That's a good question. I, uh, I feel like I don't if it think it, it could have. I don't think we're really. And it's you? <laughs> Yeah. It seems to be in a different league. She kind of just like smirks at you a little, very, very briefly, and then dismisses it back to her business face. And then um, she's got her arms folded and she's like, So what I'm hearing is you were unable to recover the Droid Queen. Well, mm. Captain. We take Canada to get a vial of ooze. <laughs> she's looking but at you, and then she's like, she's looking between the two of you, right? So before you say unfortunately, she's looking between you, like you can clear how she's like, God, my God, these fucking pair, like, <laughs> <laughs> and like you can like she's like her arms are full, but you can clearly see like her arms, like her hands are gripping her like biceps kind of area of her arms, and then like, like her upper arm, and you can clearly she's gripping because she's clearly like going, I need these guys to let me get a ride off the station, bide your time. Bide your time. <laughs> so yeah, and then you see, unfortunately. Um. 
I'll uh, block Dragon Kid up and uh, Dragon Kid. Uh, make a Fortitude save. <laughs> okay. Uh, da -da -da -da, fortune. There it is. Bike. Yeah, she slams you right against the wall, trashing whatever it is that, that is actually on that wall. Um, smacking you right in, and, like in the split second, and she just says, "You let Hermione drink DNA from the the drug queen." I mean, it's like the coldest. I voice. think Sig would telekinetic projectile the first object right at her. Yeah, cool. Uh, can you roll a will save? Yeah. Um. Cool. You can't. Okay. I you, think would, like, you go to like like scare, you go to move your hand. Happens. Yeah, you go to move your hand, and let's say it's like I don't know one of the like pencils from the fucking like cup that she's got. Like Emily used to keep that she used to just throw. At, yeah. You know, I think they're probably styluses, but yeah, like you go to like do that, and it doesn't work. So what's like Zig's reaction to when like you go to reach out and nothing happens? I think he'd kind of fall forward a wee bit. I think he'd kind of like throw himself at it, as in like he'd. You turn around. I think you'd actually physically pick up the pen as if to like throw it, mm. and then like, but instead of throwing it, just let go in the hand and have the telekinetic projectile take it and mm -hmm. fire it across. So like you almost like um, pick it up as that, as that doesn't. Yeah, like, you pick it yeah. up. You open your palm, and then it doesn't move. Yeah, but um, kind of when it doesn't move, he's kind of like the throwing action. Kind of the mm -hmm. rest of his body just follows that, and he falls off the chair a wee bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think um, he's all a bit scrambled. Yeah, and I think Alice like like puts a hand on like your shoulders if to almost help right yourself. But like this is all very 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 quick, and uh, like mm -hmm. so Alice will move to help you um, as soon as she can. But yeah, so like escape's like instinctual flick, like split second reaction of just smacking you into the wall. Like what the fuck? And then she screams at you. It's like you've let him drink or get access to DNA from the drug queen. I would. Kind of scowl at her. A boy. Yeah, because this probably hurt like fuck. Uh, but kind of like, you go as into that situation with the dragons. We had no choice. He invited himself onto the ship. And at that point, we were in no fit state to be able to fight him back. Like, we probably would never be in a fit state to fight him back. What do you expect us to do? Jim. You can see that she looks. If she was a Vesk, she'd be snarling with her teeth. Like her like in razor blade teeth. Um but like she's just you can almost hear her teeth grind. And then she lets up on the pressure from you against the wall. And she's like Hermione now has access to the vault. We need to leave now. I need to get to a vault door. Where I would turn to Zig. I was like, can you get his right here? Right. <laughs> gets up on the gets up on the chair. Um turns around and starts bippity bapping. Yeah, and I think she just walk, walks away. <laughs> uh Nix, what's happening in the engine room? Um <laughs> mostly frustration mm -hmm. and somewhere between uh admiration and despair, I think. Yeah. Um, I think still trying to figure out the connections of this thing. And I think the concern of whether it's safe or not is a bit moot at this point. Yeah, like, I mean, SK seemed happy with it, right? So. That's good enough, yeah. right? Hmm. Yeah. I don't know enough about her to be confident. And yeah. she's been a bit sketchy about it. I mean, that sketchy is definitely a word to describe her, yeah. Mm. S Kate. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think it's probably waiting for the comms to talk about whether we're ready to go. Mm. Hit jump. Because we probably don't want to be in the room when that happens. Yeah. You probably don't. Um, but until then, it's. Trying to f yeah, so where the connection's going, what it is, whether it's uh, living or anything. 
So, are you going to attempt anything on Ninjuro, or are you going to just leave and bail? Like, what's the what's your thoughts there? Sorry, you were cutting out a little bit. Uh, yeah. Um, so probably try to look at my skills. Um, I kind of want to know because it, it, you said it sounds like it's growing, so I kind of want to figure out if it's living. Yeah, it um, just it's it's not so much that it physically looks like it's growing still. It definitely looks mm -hmm. like it has been grown, if that makes sense. Um, as I say, it's, okay. it's very much like um, crystal kind of structure, um, and it's like as I say, is it any sort of crystal? That I'd... Well, as I said, no. Like when you tried to like, yeah. you did your check and like, no, like it, it's not something that you are familiar with. It's some kind of bizarre, yeah. kind of weird fiber optic crystal looking thing that seems to have like grew out in stems, looking for it. like, and it, it. You can tell from your engineering check. It has went to components the engine would normally feed to. Yeah. Okay. But it's definitely something new. But it's still growing. Yeah, I mean, from what you can see in this room, it doesn't seem to be growing any further in this room. Whether or not, because it, mm. it doesn't stop in this room, remember, it feeds into like walls and ceilings and floors, so... Yeah, I'll go through and check. Just one slight concern. It's just checking the ooze room. It's not fed through and connected to anything. Yeah, I mean, you can head through, yeah. <laughs> Imagine there was just like 20 of them. Um, but yeah, it's like... the fear of what happens when that thing meets the ooze. Yeah. That's a... That's that's a thing. That's fine. No, the ooze is still in its containment field. And there's just like, I don't know, a pile of helmets in the bottom of the yeah. uh, thing slowly being digested. So Ooze is, okay. st Ooze is still present and accounted for. Um, I think then I'll probably head to the cockpit. Mm -hmm. Ready for launch. Okay, okay. I'm sure they know what they're doing. So, you head to the cockpit. Anything you see uh, as you enter? Um, I think it's, uh, yeah, nothing. Uh, walk past and sit down in my usual chair. Mm hmm. Um, kind of spin it around to view the crew and just say, I think we're good to go. Yeah. Let's go. I would not. We need to get you some kind of captain line, don't we? For this moment. Engage. <laughs> 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 Disengage. <laughs> From responsibility. <laughs> Uh, just jump. That that's been said quite a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, do you want to give me a another piloting check, and we'll see see how well Zig does it actually shifting the ship into drive space. Yeah, balls against Bill. Yeah. Just jump. <laughs> just jump. Um, just jump. Yeah. So jump. I think. Um, the ship, as like you hit the kind of you know engaging the drive kind of generator uh, to buff out of it, the ship's kind of like energy field is flickering on and off around the ship's kind of like structure um, to try and like contain mm. itself so it can survive in drive space. Um, there's like weird pulsing coming out of the ship, like big energy kind of like arcs of energy, um, but like lightning, um, shooting down the kind of um, almost like the the framework of the shield is shooting down that, um, and it seems like it's kind of patching gaps in the, the kind of the bubble shield, as it were. And uh, the ship shudders and shivers, um, and yeah, the whole thing starts to start vibrating. So these are all kind of like strapped in, and it's not what you would call a a smooth a smooth ride at all. The whole thing starts to like oh, shake. No. Um, things start vibrating off shelves. Guns come out of l like lodged hiding spaces in Lyco's room. Um, the body in the cargo hold just starts like moving around. It's, you know, getting smacked. Which is always concerning with a zombie. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it starts to smack <laughs> around a bit, um, which is not ideal. And uh, SK decides to say, she says, "Fuck this," and she goes uh, and straps herself into the, you know, one of the seats, um, in the mess hall. Wussy. <laughs> well, she's not going to stand in a cargo hold that's got a fucking loose body and also debris. 
from a broken uh, speeder, uh, um, smacking I'm around. I myself in this time as well. <laughs> I, I, I got a four he did something. Where the where day. are you strapping into again? Um uh, I'm just gonna what that didn't my my, my <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. It's like you can you can like I think we're just like you can be in your room just, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> why are you rolling five D ten? Wait, I don't know what I mean that. <laughs> Randomly. How did I even <laughs> do that, actually? That's what I'm at, you know? Bizarre. But anyway... I, I, I actually really want to know how I did that. I didn't do that. But yeah, uh, you see in front of you, drive space rips open, bits of the station go like, floating up and like, blowing away, the kind of drive space like, kind of wraps around to the ship. And you just kind of like almost, instead of graciously flying forward into drive space, you just kind of like almost tumble sideways into it. Like a kind of a uh, careening ship, um, and you start to slowly just kind of drift through drift space. Weirdly, um, yeah, you just made it in. What now? Uh, also, uh, Zig, I need you to uh, roll me a d6. Okie dokie. Cool. Have a three. Yeah. So, uh, the ship's just kind of. Well, it's <coughs> not always pointing forward. Put it that way. It just seems to be almost tumbling through drift space. I feel I'm able to sort of like correct it somewhat, like mitigate the. Uh, no, anytime oh. you try and like, like maneuver the ship, there's no response. From the ship, like it's like you tell the ship to go left, and it just keeps like slowly pivoting in whatever way it was going. I'd look at Alice with a quizzical, like sort of confused look, and just go, "Hmm." Oh, the ship's not meant to do this. And she kind of points vaguely out the cockpit window. I, I, I guessed. <laughs> um, anyone know what's happening? <laughs> Uh, we uh, we seem to be uh, drift, a drift in the drift. A drift in the drift. <sighs> Furler? Where'd she go? <laughs> she just like stormed away. <laughs> I mean, you can enter her if you wanted. She did the uh, repairs right, she might have an idea how to... If you call them that. What did she do? Okay. Oh, why I don't, don't, why don't you all go to the engine room and find out? <coughs> so, I think... Um, yes, yeah, That's yeah like, the, like, I like the idea that... I'd fall. Yeah, so like, everybody goes to the engine room. Let's just pop you all in the engine room. Let's just... I can jump on Nick's back. Like, wander into my room and see everybody gone. I'd be like, ah. Yep. So I'm gonna just pop these all. Get back in. Everybody back in. There we go. So next, you can bit the console. Zig, you can bit the door, and like, you can just be behind Nick's. And you just see this horrible, huge crystal growth thing go into the walls, pulsing with energy. Um, <laughs> it looks like the engine actually exploded and like crystallized is what it looks like. This wasn't like this before. It really wasn't. I feel like the engine looked more engine-y previously. Mm -hmm. Very much that. And less like an organic crystal. Hmm. Yeah, I seem to remember it being more like an engine. God's name is no, not in God's name. Yeah. I mean, there are gods. Uh, give give me a random god. Roll for a random god. Oh, well, you got Phrasma, If you wanted her. No. no I don't. <laughs> Good old Demoratosh. We got a warden. What the fucking like the devouring god? Um, let me. Fi I'll find you a god, right? Like, oh, give you me a second. You mean Sereni, the best god? Sarenry, or whatever his name is. All right, so. All right, so uh, you've got Oras 
uh, or Oris, which is the agent of change. It's a. Uh, there's the, the, the rat grandmother. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Let's say Lao Shopo. Um, Lao Shopo. That's too long. Damn it. Yeah. Just say um, that and it would be like hell if I offline. You've got this. <laughs> you've got a uh, Aomde, which is a uh, the spirit of Galarian, which is the justice god. There's no justice here. Wow. Um, Try to think what else we've got. We've got um. Triune. You've got Triune. Yep. You've got the Devourer. Um. Triune makes sense actually. Um, yeah. Oh, hell try in. You've got Desna, that's the god of dreams and or the goddess of dreams, and luck and stars and travellers. So Desna. I mean, that seems fitting. Yeah, hmm. right, so and it's a good Let's go with Desna. Yeah. Because in universe, we have a pretty good familiarity with most of these. Yeah. So you just like, is what in my Desna's OG. name did she do to this thing? <laughs> what? What do we? <laughs> what do we do? What are we looking at? Uh, we could ask her to fix it again. Yes, so I'm, I'm we have call. to. What's that? Yeah, 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 yeah. We can call her. I would call. It's just uh, the intercom. You just act, like go to a wall panel, hit the button, yeah. and it just speaks through the ship here. Yeah? Uh, filler, come to the engine room, please. You're um, like no reply, quite clear. <laughs> I'd like. <laughs> 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 yep, and um, yeah. There's like, how long do you wait? Um, as long as I have to patiently. <laughs> yeah, well, like five, <gasps> like five minutes pass. Okay, I'm gonna go find her. I would sigh. Go find her. Okay. I'll come out. with the captain. Then, um, <clears throat> then I just go straight towards. I, I'll go without the yeah, fuck. I'll go, this, I'll go to the cargo bay. Yep. Ah! Lovely. You're here. Um, you walk in, you see her like crouched like over, staring at this body on the ground. Um, yeah, what's all the things that were on the shit station? And then, uh, she looks down and she's like, it's a shame. She then closes its eyes with that kind of finger, kind of motion of like closing its eyes and she's like, you know, this was done by them, right? Absolutely. This is their solution to survival. And maybe at that point, Lyco walks into the cargo base, well. <laughs> and she kind of, kind of just draws her eyes back and You can maybe just make out that she's muttering something under her breath. And then, <laughs> um, you know, kind of puts her hand on its chest and she just stands back up. So are you calmed or something? The engine, what exactly did you do? She kind of looks at you and she's like, Do you understand planar physics? Um, humor me. Okay, I think you're very smart. Um, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> 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 Uh, is there a problem? Did we make it to drift? We're in drift. At drift? <laughs> she kind of looks and she's like, Okay, so step one worked. That's fine. Just fix your engine. Oh, great. Great idea. Um, how do we unfix what you fixed? She kind of looks and she's like, Yeah. Your engine was pretty beat up. That it's nothing next could near handled. I think that's why it was pretty beat up, from what I could tell. 
your um, oh, reckless oh, android fantastic. seems to be a uh, short sighted. We've had a stressful couple of days, okay. Um, Go to be here places quick. If we didn't stress the engine, we wouldn't have been here to save you. Which I'm eternally grateful for. And you can see she's obviously straining that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you work with my android? Our android, I keep on saying my android. <laughs> 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 And so big so possessive. Nix mm -hmm. has a name. <laughs> Nix has a yep. name, yes. <laughs> Justice um, for Nix. And we can fix this. Sounds just so grateful. Yes? Gratitude has limits, Vesk. Well, I mean, if we don't get out of here, then you dig out of here, so it benefits you. You're right. Hard to argue with your logic. I would kind of like open the door and you know, like after you, my lady. <laughs> and she just looks at you. It's like she she does. She walks closer and then like just kind of st she steps around quite respectfully, the body. And then uh, as she's like walking past, like you and Lyco, uh, she just kind of looks at you and she's like, "You asked me to humor you, not the other way round." And then she walks towards the engine. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. I'm up in this situation probably. Well, I really am. <laughs> it's great. Like, yeah, talk us through Zora's mindset then. What's? Oh, uh, it's just, it's just the Almighty Isabel. <laughs> our fates and our hands. It's, it's, it's funny. It's funny. It's just funny. I mean, let's face it. I mean, she is like a person of the world, right? That needs to get places, etc. So yeah, it is. It's, she obviously doesn't want to like die on Absalom, right? Um, mm -hmm. Makes sense. And then, uh, yeah. So like, she heads towards the engine room. Zig, are you actually still in the doorway? Because I love the idea that she was to walk in and you're there. Oh yes. Yeah, it's a perfect scene. It's like the door so wish was open. Uh, and she's just there and she goes to walk in and like do you have your back to the door staring at the crystal? I have the back to the door I'm kind of looking at oh, it's um, fucking I'm kind shiny of as fuck right? mesmerised so. by the shiny mm -hmm. crystal right? <laughs> it's um <clears throat> very absorbing mm. of my attention and she just stands there and she, she doesn't really say anything she just turns to you Zora and then point mm. like waves a hand at like the back of Zig Just let her do her thing, Zig. And maybe at that point you turn around. Yeah, and you like you see her standing with the, the captain. I'm kind of like, dude, get take a fright, you know. Mm. You know, it's it's almost as if the captain's kind of being you know completely zoned out on the the this weird crystal thing, and I think he'd kind of jump and then instinctively sort of climb up like Nix. Mm -hmm. Nix five point one. <laughs> five point one. Um. Is it does it is it slightly different? Is is is, is like the shoulders feel different as I clutch on with my claws? Is it is it or is it just the same? I say at the moment he's in like full uh, battle suit armor style of thing. Oh yeah, of course. So the actual the armor itself feels the same. Mm -hmm. You just got a slightly uh, softer white glow once you get up the top. Oh, okay, cool. And. Uh, Probably less, less spooky feature. Yeah, I think that'd be. Bit. I think it'd be. Um, I think it'd be mildly more comforted by the fact that uh, the armor is like familiar, at least. Familiar, yeah. Yeah, like there's, there's, there's probably little scratch marks where you like where you claim up all the time, yeah. but yeah, there is definitely that kind of valley thing. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> like, definitely. Kind of like almost almost like a, a weird dream. Weird dream next. And she, uh, she walks in and takes obviously her uh, place at the other control console, and just starts tapping away. The door so wish was closed unless somebody else, unless you guys are coming in. What do you guys do well, outside? I'll probably just go in. 
standing. Well, in fact, I actually would I actually. No, I'm not even being here. I would not be of any use. Probably <laughs> just go sit in the canteen and hope for the best. Just lay on the table, staring up at the, <laughs> the fluorescent lighting. <laughs> <laughs> just like, <laughs> what do we do next? <laughs> Um, like, what are you doing? Like, are you, like, obviously, SK walked by, you probably stood in the hallway while they had that conversation about moving into the engine room. Uh, did you go follow the captain? Uh, I'm not sure of what I'll do, actually. Mm. Um, I thought I was going to speak to Shakos. Yeah, that'd probably be a good idea. She's probably uh, a bit bored, honestly. Mm -hmm. I think he's slightly irked that uh, obviously the uh, Furler decided to mutter something sort of in under her breath. I mean, presumably he was she was saying something about the bone sages or what have you, the Oxians and. He would maybe think, eh, why don't you roll, she's doing uh, this so that I can't hear that. Why don't you roll either percep roll me perception and, uh, what do you call it, sense motive. Okay. Because I'll, uh, I'll let you know what you think about that situation and if you do. Back to the furler. Mm -hmm. uh, Perceptione, where did perception go? Below mysticism, that makes sense. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so you're not quite sure why she's doing it, right? But it looks like she's praying. Okay. Or at least saying a prayer. Um, especially with like the body language, the way she like touches the chest when she like stood back up. All felt ceremonial enough to you. So yeah. it didn't give you the vibe that she was just having a quiet bitch. Okay. Unless the okay. prayer was death to the bone sages. But yeah. So that's the vibe that you I, get. I, obviously, she he wouldn't necessarily take offence to that, but it was just the way she was sort of seeing something about, you know, the undead, and then stopped when you came in the room, kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah, and like you're still welcome to take uh, <laughs> whatever reaction you will to that, because it was definitely deliberate on her part. But yeah, yeah. it was mostly a. Looks like she was praying. Uh, yeah. I'll go and speak to Shackos. I think that'd be a, a good idea. Cool. Do you buzz or do you walk in? Chap! <laughs> yep, so pop yourself over. Sick, where am I? There I am. Am. Like, uh, just a quick knock twice. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you hear, like, Clearly, somebody at the other side of the door, but as if they're not obviously familiar with the door settings. And then she hits <laughs> a button, and the door swishes open. She's like, "Hello. Why do I feel queasy?" Uh, I don't know. Why? Why do you feel queasy? Oh, sh we're in drift. Okay. That that. Okay. And you can clearly see that she's like struggling to speak between like gulps. As if she's trying to hold back. She's like So um where are we going? She like holding the door frame. She like steps back and just sits back on the bed. That's a good question. Uh Akaton is the idea. And she just looks at it and goes so we're leaving a trash fire to go to a shithole. Great. I mean... Yay, surviving. I guess you could <laughs> say that, yeah. And she's like, do you have any more, uh, she holds up her pistol. She's like, we're kind of running on empty over here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're cutting out. Sorry, you get weird electronic. Um, okay, no, sorry. Um, he, he, I since he's been in, like, you know, probably assembling, disassembling guns, etc. He he probably does just like 
material, like, you know, inexplicably reaches into a pocket she didn't notice before and retrieves, like, a small clip of ammo. Mm -hmm. Chucks it to her and says, Got a few more I can spare. She's kind of like, Yeah, this is a laser pistol. And I, I get that you, you're out of practice, Lyco, but uh, she, like, hits the clip off the laser. Like, this, this is batteries. Oh, this is um, archaic. Mm -hmm. And she throws it back to you. It kills people just as well. Uh, and she's like, "This takes batteries. It doesn't take that." I don't. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I have any. I don't think I. What? What if? What have I got? Is it compatible with? Uh, I've got a pulse caster. It's battery charged. And she kind of like gets up and walks and she's like, I trust that you can make this work again. And she kind of like just puts the gun towards you. And she's like, and she'll say, are you like, do you visibly carry like a knife on you or something? Is that something that Lyco actually Yeah, I, I, I have a knife on me at all times. It'd be in my hat probably yeah. at the moment. Um, so like, she, sure. so she passes yeah, you like the gun, cool. like, and she just takes the, mm. the knife out of your belt. Uh, and she's like, I'll trade you for now. And when that's fully charged and she taps, by holding the blade and she taps it with a handle. She'll like, uh, we'll trade back when it's charged. She kind of just winks at you, goes, you know, and winks at you. She, she doesn't finger gun though, she got herself a knife because she doesn't really want to be on in a strange ship with strangers without a weapon. <laughs> Fair enough. I think you'd be fully aware that I have batteries and charge for weapons all the time. You actually just go into the, uh, well the, the captain's sleep I mean, in the armory. Your batteries though, that's a different, you know. Yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> you don't take from a vest cord. I mean, yeah. I mean, you could ask. I mean, I like to believe that the room under the cockpit is actually the armory. It's just that's where the <laughs> captain dragged the bed. <laughs> I've got a lot of food and I've got a lot of just ammo. Yeah. In game and out of game, I just absolutely hate running out of that sort of stuff. <laughs> so I just never let that happen. Yeah, Ever. So. <laughs> yeah, so maybe that dawns on Lyco. Like, oh. The captain might be able to fix that for you. Yeah, no, I suppose it really hurt him. Um, I think maybe like as you, if you're going to turn to like. necessarily borrow, bother him about it this second though, because it seems like a secondary concern. Yeah, like she's happy enough with a knife. Do you know what I mean as well? She feels a bit safe, safer with that. She lies in the bed, yeah. and she's like, "So, what do we do once we get to Akaton?" Uh I personally, um, I'll follow the captain's lead, but well, it's up to you what you do. I'm probably gonna find a transport back to one of the pack ships. How, obviously. I know this sounds stupid, I know what was bad in there, but how bad was it in terms of I, wh what was the damage to the uh, the stewards numbers? I'll be honest, I don't know. I really don't know. I was um, in the lower levels just patrolling as I do, because you know Oh look, who gets the lower level duty shift? Shakos. Um, and then all hell broke loose. Alarms went off. I <laughs> the uh, dead, the Walking Dead. They went a bit mad, uh, frenzied, if you will. I had to shoot my way to some kind of securable location. And then they, uh, I hear your your voice over the comms. Lucky Shakos. <laughs> yeah. And she like sits up in the bed and like pulls her knees in close, and she's like, "It's bad, Lyco." I know. It's uh. Well, we've been kind of dragged into this whole thing and. Clearly, it's way above our pay grade, but I don't know how much choice but we have but to wade into it deeper. The Bone Sages, Eox, it 
I I have a vested interest in in reestablishing some sort of connection, if possible. I don't particularly want them to fall, but this thing might actually be powerful enough to accomplish that. And then there are the ramifications of what if a packed world falls, and what if Absalom and the Ox fall. It's I'm also very conscious of the fact that I work for a Vesk. I mean, no offense to the captain. He has expressed little interest in uh, the Veskarium and its cause, but... You think the Veskarium might be in league with the Eoxians? No. No, I don't think that's what's happening at all here. But I think they'll see an opportunity. And... The only reason they won't seize it is if something stops them. Right now, I have no idea of what could or would stop them. So, I think things only get worse. And here's me hoping they were going to be stuck busy with the swarm problem for, well, forever, ideally, until they wipe each other out. It's a nice idea, but I think... I think the swarm it, it's obviously a threat but it's been a very convenient threat for us but right now they're not the they're not the pressing concern and I don't think the Viscarium entirely sees them that way either I think there's mm, I don't know I'm no more in the know in this stuff than you are, but I do know that the Vess clearly have some fear of the Eoxians. They are... Even Cap, who's intimidated by... They're not... They're not fearless. I mean, they, they may be frightening themselves, but they're not without fear and they're not without uh, rationality. They probably got knee deep into this war and realized that the swarm were a convenient way out just the same the pact worlds did the swarm i don't know i don't know anything about the swarm i admit it but i feel like there was something awfully convenient about their attack what if it stops being convenient for one of the parties one of the sides in the war Maybe they make a little more effort. Maybe they've been holding back some secret weapon. I don't know. But I do know that... Imagine if it was a gang war on the lower levels or something. Right? Suddenly some new threat comes up and attacks one of the big established gangs. What does the other gang do? Goes for the kill. It tries to take the big win. Establish dominance. And what do the Vesk like doing? You know, it's... I don't know. I, I'm, I'm out of my depth. I think we all are. But... I have to be in this to an extent. I think the right choice for you is to get out and get far out. But I don't know where, if anywhere, is going to stay safe for long. And then, uh, like, you can just kind of see her, like, she's just kind of staring at, like, the knife, like, the, how the light reflects onto the knife, or, like, with her knees pulled up close. Uh, like, she is listing, but she's almost, like, she doesn't really know what, like, to do, because you kind of mentioned kind of how futile a lot of things are, and she's just kind of sat there being like, well, my plan was just to get back to, like, authority, right? That was what she'd said, like, find a, a pack ship. Yeah. Um, and get back on that, because that's likely where the, the new point of command is going to be yeah. um, on in the fleet, because that's the one thing you noticed was a lack of packed world ships in that fight. It's almost yeah. like the uh, the Oxian fleet, which I keep calling the corpse fleet, um, but I mean, I mean, thing, yeah. yeah, I mean the Oxian fleet, um, like that. It almost looks like they might have been buying them time, right, to have gotten the fuck away so yeah 
Yeah, it could have been noble, you know. Or they're all debris now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, there's that. <laughs> so, Sharkos doesn't know. She's just been stuck in a fucking office, locked in the lower levels, with things banging on the door, while she's like, I have no... Like, I have low ammo. You know, I, I, I can't fight my way out of this. Help. Uh, and obviously, let's face it, she's so fucking low down in the, the steward tier that they're not going to risk any resources for her, right? So, yeah, it is quite shit, the situation. Uh, so you kind of get all that kind of vibe from her. And then uh, I need you to make a will save. Okay. One sec. Why is that not... Ah, there we go. Do you want me to type in first? Nah, just go for it. Been very unresponsive. There we go. Oh god. So, um, like a thousand, thousand buzzing wasps in your ear. Okay. You feel immense pressure, and you kind of like you stumble to a bit where you need to like brace yourself on the door frame. Okay. Do you excuse yourself from Shakos? Or you stay. So you cut out a bit there. I so think you, you I excuse th yourself from Shakos or do you stay? Yeah, exactly. I thought I got it, but you yep, did cut out perfect. in the middle. Um, oh, good question. I think I excuse myself. So yeah, how does that look? So you get like <laughs> immense migraine attack now. And then... But yeah, I, I guess you probably would notice that I've kind of stumbled a little bit. Okay, mine. she's kind of half distracted with the... Uh, the yeah. knife, so you stumble a bit, do you make it a bigger deal, or do you try and hide the fact, or like, because you could make it a deal that she would notice and help, do you know what I mean? If you were stumbling. I would probably hide it. I think he, he, mm -hmm. he's sort of proud enough to do that. And also maybe he doesn't necessarily want to worry her anymore. He probably thinks, uh, okay, shit, I'm gonna Yeah, because go. she's going to have to find herself a bit as well, do you know what I mean? Like, what's her yeah. next step as well as you guys, so... Yeah, Akaton so is exactly known as it's for its steward presence, you know. <laughs> in this occasion, you'll probably just wander into the the uh, cockpit, not really knowing who to, yeah, you know, in, engage. Other than that, just, just generally go in. And yeah. I'm assuming this feeling is continuing. Yeah, so sort of going. Give me a second, because my computer is just not responsive. There we go. And uh, yeah, so you. You walk out, the door swishes behind you, you take a couple of steps towards the cockpit uh, and then you take like another step and you're in a completely different place. Okay. You're uh, on the bridge of a ship. Not the ship you expected to walk into when you walk into the cockpit. Okay. So you walk through the door on the bridge of the ship and you're uh, greeted by this very kind of tall, like red kind of cloak figure. Um, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Uh, let me go and... I'm going to say okay a lot, I think. Bear with me a second. Just want to change its name to Cloaked Figure. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, so you walk into this very, very busy... Um, kind of, as I said, bridge of what looks like a fairly large starship. Um, and... <laughs> this big red robed figure uh, in front of you kind of turns round and you see this. Okay. Spooky. Yep. Tall spooky boy. Uh, and that's maybe nine feet. Nine feet tall. Um, and just stands and its hands all wrapped around it's kind of like up to its shoulders. And uh, you step into that. And it just kind of just kind of turns on the spot where it looks like it was facing you the whole time. And it says, "Like Quint, I am Tectolanus. I have been contacted by Sindael to relay a message." A uh, message, yes. Uh You're also a bone sage. I, I look questioningly at it. Yeah, and uh, 
it just kind of stands silent. Okay. As if it doesn't even need to answer that question, there's the vibe you get from it. And then um, it says, We are in battle. And it kind of turns and just looks out the kind of front window, and you can see obviously, like, on all of the kind of like the sensors in the middle and the big kind of uh, circular. A control console in the middle with the big holographic display. It's got like the, the kind of the star city in the middle with everything firing at it, um, and like coordinating attacks. And maybe at this point you notice the crew are all undead. Yeah. And um, it kind of turns back to you and says, "Sindale says you need to keep on seeking your own truth." Thank, thank you for relaying the message. Your thanks are not required. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't. I don't know if he would say anything to that. I think he's just. This thing's just like standing, staring at a you, like the weird, creepy, nine feet tall thing staring down at you. By his sudden appearance in this place. Uh, can you return me to the uh, to, uh, to my ship? It kind of just looks at you, <laughs> and as much as you can tell, it's looking at you, and it says. You never left. And I think with that you just hear, Lyco! Lyco? Uh, he, he, yeah, yeah? Yeah, and I think at that point like you kind of like snap to the part where like, maybe through him, Alice walks, like out of the robes, and then like the whole kind of visual dissipates into like the cockpit that you're familiar with. It's like, you've kind of just been standing there creeping me out, Lyco. Sorry, I... Uh... I had a thing, it was... Uh. Sorry, I'm a little disoriented. I'm okay, I I I'll, I'll be fine, thank you. She kind of just looks at you. Like, well, you don't look okay. Yeah, it wasn't the most pleasant. Uh, most pleasant trip. Just pop that in there for people, for those of you who care about spelling <laughs> and names. Um, but I'm. Um, yeah, I, I'm. 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 I am fine. Sorry for worrying you. And she kind of just looks and she like she puts like a hand on like your shoulder and kind of like squeezes your shoulder a tiny bit. And she's like, "I am not fine." And she kind of like waves vaguely at the cockpit and like the window and just you see like the angry dr drift space outside as it slowly like you can clearly see there's like a tunneled effect to drift space normally and you are just slowly rotating within that off kilter but I think this is bad yeah it is that doesn't come from me like I'm not trying to comfort you. I'm just acknowledging reality. I'm I'm not I'm not the big tech guy around here. I'm not And I'm not the big person. tech gal around here anymore and she kinda looks quite pleased about that and starts like just like prodding at herself. Um so yeah, I don't know what exactly is happening, but I know that you're not generally supposed to just wander aimlessly in the uh, in the drift. So that's something. Um, what if we go mad in here? Oh, 
What do you mean? Stuck in the drift. Nobody but <laughs> each other is company. What if drift ghosts get us? I'm not sure there are ghosts. I mean, there's definitely stuff from other worlds that gets... We... We will probably, you know, run out of supplies before we go insane. Sure. Huh. Do I eat now? That wasn't comforting either, was it? No, like, she's lost in thoughts now, but she's like, huh, do I eat now? And then she just, like, walks past you towards uh, the canteen. <laughs> Although, my, uh... Mm. Yeah, so she just, like, wanders away from the cockpit, leaving you in the cockpit. <laughs> So, uh, Zora, you're in the yes, <laughs> in the canteen, as it were, or the the mess hall. Mm. Yeah, what do Alice just walks in and just like picks up food and just starts eating it? Oh, you eat now? Don't know. Gonna find out. <laughs> I was just. Sit back and they'll find out, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she just sits, um, like, chewing on random things, like energy bars that she finds in the cupboard. That's about it. And then she kind of, like, maybe after, like, munching a bar and then opening another one, she just kind of looks up at you. She's like, you okay? Fine. Not much I can do in the engine room. Can't fly the shut. Can't fly the ship without a good engine. It's true. So like she kind of like nods, like half filling her mouth full of this bar. Have you heard anything from the engine room yet? Oh no. I roll. They scream. They scream. Ah! <laughs> 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 uh, <coughs> I'll be Sorry, cheer noises. It's okay, she's just okay, at so no I point she's... Was well, it no point I'm she's like, ever been asked to actually go to the engine room? I would, I would kind of grunt, and I would just like say, do you pass me one of them? Like the energy bars. I'd just start eating that. Because there's no she, point we got there. She just points to the cupboard <laughs> and she's like, no, these ones are mine. Oh, oh. <laughs> and she points to the camera. Kind of like snot. <laughs> 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 like the word. <laughs> no. I would uh, I'll just go get an energy bar. Mm-hmm. Start eating it like a... Like a child. <laughs> yeah. And I think, yeah, we just have like you and her sat in the, the mess hall just eating these uh, energy bars. <laughs> What's happening in the engine room then? Boy, was... Um... What was this, Kate? Up to? Uh, literally, uh, yep, she's just working on one of the, the computer consoles and she hasn't said a single thing to you guys. Can I follow what she's doing by the other one? Uh, yeah, you could try and bring it up. Do you want to do a, I guess, a computer's check? Uh, yes. Yep. Numbers. So, I'm going to see how much you get. Let me do a check. But my browser is moving at like a snail's pace, so bear with me. I don't know why it's so goddamn slow, but it's probably because it's trying to render two points of vision that I need to get rid of the other one where it's gone missing somewhere. Um, right, let me find where her skills are listed. Okay, yeah, you can um, you can see that it's been partitioned, like she's tried to like mm-hmm. segment her computer away um, from like the kind of general ship access. Um, mostly because the engine room is kind of separate from the consoles in the in the cockpit. Besides the engage the engine buttons, you know, and the diagnostics and stuff, and mm-hmm. she's um. 
because it is kind of designed to have somebody in the engine room and somebody in the cockpit when flying the ship. And uh, it looks like she's just pulling, like she's going through nav data, is what you can see, just pouring through nav data. This is where she's looking for. I don't know. You just know that she's just like she's pulling. Like imagine somebody's just taken all of the nav data from mm. the entire history of the eleventh hour and dumped it into a spreadsheet. So like, what would you like make of that? Um, I'll just turn to her and say, "Ask Kate, what what are you doing right now?" I'm trying to get us away out of this mess. How? And like she visibly like stops like working on it and like just stands up, exhales very like 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 <sighs> and then she just uh cracks like her like her fingers into her wrists and then cracks like her shoulders and uh, just stops and then just visibly turns ninety degrees to face you. All very like the whole process takes maybe like forty seconds. And she goes, remember the part where I was allowed to work on saving everybody and you were going to let me do that? I want to know what you're doing with our ship. Trying to get it to our space. Somewhere real. We are adrift. Your, your navigation attempt previously did not work. Your pilot is a child. He's pretty grown. Pretty good clench. Like, I love how like she's talking about you but like as if you're not even here, right? Our pilot is fully capable. Oh in that case, brilliant. <laughs> I'll I'll be in the cargo bay. And she just if makes you motions to leave. <laughs> if you could explain what you're doing, perhaps I might be able to assist you and we could get out of here. As it stands, you've turned our engine room into something utterly unusable by me, the ship's engineer. The ship was unusable. You had killed yourself from what I could tell. You weren't alive in that room. What the hell happened in there? I hardly think that's any of your business. We were back in time for leaving. She just has this kind of blank look where um, you can probably tell this is a practiced look of hers where she's clearly having a lot of thoughts behind that face that she's projecting. <laughs> and then uh, she says, um, like she taps the controls and then just like sends all the data to both screens, swipes it over so it shares the screen. And she says, I'm using every single jump point calculation to make a map in here. Mm hmm. He's trying to map the drift. I'm trying to map something to give me one point of reference. I don't care where it is. One point of reference gets us to real space. Now, perhaps that's something I can help with. I am probably more familiar with this navigational data than you are. Numbers are numbers, but go and be my guest. I don't care how long it takes us to get out of here, I just need to get out of here. Drift is, um... Problematic. Yeah, it has issues. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll take a crack at the data then if I can. Yeah, so physical sciences probably, right? Yep. To do this. There's my physical science, there it is. God, this browser is so slow just now. We do. Yeah, so yeah. this isn't a if I, let me a second, I'm just going to close my browser and reopen it all because it's actually kind of unusable. Can I minimize this and hope for the best? Let's see what happens. Uh, yeah, so you start to like pull up the data and you can't really 
grasp how she intends to do this because mm -hmm. this isn't the first time people have wanted to map the drift. Let's face it. Um, it's why things like the Starstone exist, right? As a, a jump yep. point. Like they pull you to things. Um, people jump within like the the gravity well of the star and things like that. So yeah, like doing jumps to planets and things require really sophisticated uh, software. Because originally like when drift travel was given to people, you jumped to stars and you jumped within gravity wells. And that was it, or the Starstone, hence its name Starstone, right? Um, but people have managed to get the drift computers to overlook needing that and hitting into planetary gravity wells, essentially. Mm. So it's kind of like turning the sensitivity way, 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 way up and hoping that, you know, the right thing catches you as you zoom past it. Uh, so yeah, drift space is a very, very inelegant, uh, or at least you should have said the drift drives are super inelegant in the way they work. Um, and if somebody could map the drift, the only thing you'd need to do is jump into the drift, go to the points of reference and then jump out of the drift and you'd be somewhere much quicker. Because um, all of drift space kind of just wraps around itself. So there's n never really a point of reference that people can use. So, yeah, that's what you get when you look at this pile of numbers. Because, I mean, you can recognize where the, like, she's pulled the data from the nav computer, but mm -hmm. you could have done that, right? You could literally have went boop, 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 and pulled up all the data and then just copy pasted it into an Excel sheet like she did. But there's no, like, method or logic or anything you can kind of see. Lost you again? Yeah, there, there's no like kind of method or logic that you can see to follow. Mm. If that makes sense, it's not like you go, ah, oh, so x plus y equals, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you're not gonna. There's nothing to quite grasp onto in that that front, sadly. Hmm. Yes. Well, if if you got a specific method, you're applying for this. And she looks at you and she's like. Maybe if you weren't so distracted, and she kind of like nudges at Zig, maybe you'd be able to focus. But allow me to show you my thinking. And then she starts like bringing up a like diagram of like the ship. It's a very rudimentary like kind of line diagram, and it's got and then it's got like drift space, a very kind of almost like a cylinder. So it's like you guys in a cylinder, um, like horizontally. And she's like, so if you imagine this is where we are. Mm -hmm. And then she starts, she gets like a, a kind of sector map of space brought up and then she picks it and she's like, using this method and then she like brings up the calculations from the, the sheet, puts it in and it takes the sector map and just kind of wraps it like a weird spiral. So it's almost like you've undone the tapestry and then just started to coat the cylinder in it. And she wraps it all around and she goes, so this is method A. Mm -hmm. Which right now puts us somewhere around. And she looks at it and she's like, hmm. That's the part I guess, you know, sketch on because one minute we're here, next minute we're there. And she's like kind of gesturing to different parts of the diagram. And she's like, like for example, if I just broke the engine now, we might end up at Triaxis or a Theta, but we also might just end up in the Viscarium for all I know. I think there's a good leave. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly crawl down, Nix is back. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then just wander out, you know, grab a snack. And head to the mess hall. Yeah. I think, yeah, like if you head over and do like jump in a seat and I think she'll just slide a bar across to you, across the table at you because you probably look sad I think Zig would just take it and mindless like not even like register that he's eating it, just sort of 
Mm-hmm. Automatic process, pick up food, just, yeah. chew on food. Mm. Yeah. It's just this scene of the three of you just in the, the mess hall slowly eating these fucking energy bars. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just kind of munching away being like, well, we all feel useless right now. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> um, I will enter. Yeah. Move yourself in. And, uh, lo- looming by the doorway, I, uh, announce hey uh I don't think I've tried those can I have one <laughs> Shackles, uh, Shackles, <laughs> <laughs> Alice just points to the cupboard she's like can you get me another one uh, I, think, uh, I think they could get up and just like grab a box yeah a box a box <laughs> a box <laughs> takes it off the and, uh, Zora's shelf <laughs> <laughs> yeah and just kind of like tear it open and just stick it in the center of the table. Yeah. We just have this shot of all the hands going into the middle. Yeah. Picking up like a an energy Mouthful bar. Mouthful of energy bar. Yeah. Thanks, kids. Nice. Yeah. I and I think with that, like we click back to uh, the engine room. <laughs> so. <laughs> Next. <laughs> yes. I love it. Do you want to give uh, another roll then? Uh, if you can see if you can work out any more. I will give it a try. No. Yeah, and I think like. Her explanation is getting backwards. Yeah, and I think it's maybe like everything she's explained doesn't make sense. Like she's basically taken a map, tore it up into bits, and then like fucking um, collaged it back around this, you know, 3D model she's trying to build herself of like non. 3D space. Yeah, it seems lots of assumptions being made. Yeah, um, definitely. With very little support. So, yeah, like, how does that look? Does Nick's like get frustrated with her? Does he just like point out her flaws? Like, how does that look? Yeah, I think he probably has, yeah, some passing familiarity with it and the attempts to uh, to map it. And, and yeah, he'll probably be pointing out that. She's assuming that there's some sort of continuity between the points on any particular splat on her mm. map. Just because we've entered between two points doesn't mean they're yeah, still that's still relative. Like, yeah, yeah. Like she's almost missing a few dimensions. Yeah, it's like someone trying to draw a cube, but only using two dimensions, right? Like it's yeah. While it might look right, if you make the assumptions of the fact that there's depth, yeah, it totally makes sense, mm-hmm. right? But it's still in two dimensions and you have no actual basis for the depth. So, yeah, it does, it's very, it's really hard explaining made up physics for how yep. drive space works. But I like the idea of, it's like trying to draw a cube on a piece of paper and explaining <laughs> there's depth to it when somebody doesn't understand three dimensions. Only add yep. extra dimensions to that. To make it sci-fi, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, that's, that's why he's sitting, sitting back, not knowing whether to feel smart or stupid. Yeah, and I think like maybe the way you try and explain it back to her, you like flatten the diagram and then like flip it mm-hmm. up horizontally, so you are looking at a top-down view. And it's like, well, we're in this space, and you like point at the cube that, or the yeah, the square, sorry, that's now around you, or the rectangle, and then you see, and we're there, ish, <laughs> 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 but everywhere else is outside that and it is everywhere else is outside that so yeah it doesn't really give you a point of view so I'm going to help with the fact that if every jump drags a bit of space of the drift into real space yeah yeah, yeah. the substance is really changing and then she's, uh, she's like you can't account for that though and then she like brings up like the calculations and she like highlights with, you know, her finger and like does the kind of computer thing where it does the hologram. And uh, she highlights the part of the equation. She's like, yeah, this is as close to accounting for that as we can get without it being just made up. Like you could just put anything in there. You need to put something in there to have a point of reference. So there's something to work with. Otherwise there's nothing. 
I mean, you could account for it kind of probabilistically. We know where most people, based on shipping lanes and things, you'd have a guess at roughly where most of the jumps are happening to and from. And then fit that in, that would be pretty accurate, at least within local space. Wait a minute. <laughs> And then um, she leaves. Uh oh. <laughs> what did I say? And then, like, a minute passes. She walks back. And she's holding a 20 sided gold circle sphere thing in her hand. Oh dear. Sorry. We don't even need to work out the equation. Why not? She holds up the, like, almost football sized uh, kind of gold sphere. We can just jump back to Triaxis. Why? Because we'd have a point of reference. We could get the ship fixed. <laughs> if what I've heard, how many owes you one? That must be worth an mm. engine, right? I don't know. Track just hasn't always been the most pleasant to play. Okay, so she puts one hand out like while holding this and like cupping it in the other hand. She's like, die in the drift. Take your chances with the black dragon that owes you a favor. I mean, personally, if you gave me the choice between negotiating with that dragon and trying to solve the most of our time, is it? Yeah. You're kind of cutting out a little bit. <laughs> um, what did you up to? I, I just this last part. What was the last part you said? Yeah. The very last part. I, just, I was saying, yeah, this feels easier than negotiating with the dragon. But it's the captain's call. Well, please go inform your captain. Very well. So yeah, you had... <laughs> you just take a seat and... <laughs> Grab a bar. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and Alice is like, they're very, very good like shoveling more in their mouth. Um, Cool. I suppose there's a novelty for you. Cool. Uh, ever they start seeing colours? No. Like the really trippy acid bars. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like everything distorts, all the colours go a bit wonky. Um, like Alice goes bright blue at one point, and like Nyx goes kind of greenish and then red again, and then uh, various other colours. The table is like, you know, neon pink. Uh, and they all keep shifting through the kind of rainbow spectrum and uh, yeah everything warps and we get the shot of the kind of weird blue angry drift space and then all the kind of weird light wrapping around the ship and it kind of finishes with a shot of her going ask the captain god these guys are idiots as she's dialing up on the gold orb thing and then just holds it up and then bam the ship gets vipped away uh, from drift space, and we end the session there. Oh, yeah. So let us discuss the name of the session. Drift. A drift. Yeah, drift is. <laughs> a drift. A drift is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's decent enough. Yeah. And so I am returned to my full powers. <laughs> Um, Name out of games. The um, yeah, a drift. Quick and easy one. No. Switch. Sorry, what? <coughs> goals. <laughs> Let's talk about goals. Goals. Let me just Always see believe this. in your goal. <laughs> Some believe in a goal. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pronounced unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> so, let's start with the the goals. 
Very cool. Uh, I need to get the goals up again now. Yes, indeedy. What about me? <laughs> so the goal obviously not actually achieved, although I have made contact with someone who may potentially in future have use in that regard. Who has put a singular tilde in one of the cells? Because I thought it was a dead pixel for a second. Who's done this? Wait, oh. <laughs> that could have been anyone. Where? That was you, Alex. Wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I am the creator of the spreadsheets. Ah, to be sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I think I think I've made a, a tiny little bit of a step there. Although, of course, his words were sort of basically something along the lines of, "Yeah, go find that shit." Which is not necessary. I mean, they weren't really his words either, right? Or its words. No, no. It was just kind of re relaying a message. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think... Keep hold of it. I've taken the first steps on it, but yeah, we have to keep hold of that one, obviously. And I mean, direct contact with another bone sage is pretty fucking rare, right? But that seems to be yeah. Lyco's shtick now. It's a good first step. Because mm -hmm. it definitely gave you the vibe of this is clearly someone in command and commanding. Yes, um, someone there. Uh, a, a big, a big boy. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Um, but yeah, I'd say we're still working on yours. Yep. yep. Uh, Zig. Well, I didn't fix Nix. No, he did not. But as Nix far as Zig's fixed. concerned, I don't think Nix is quite right. <laughs> <laughs> How do you mean? Like, talk is about that. Like, so what's in Zig's head then? Like, what does Nix? I, I, I again, Zig yeah, Nix he even? definitely has that very like. I mean, it is Nyx, but it's it's very, almost that sort of, you know, when you dream about some a very uncanny valley, but you know when you dream about someone, and you know it's that person, but if you think about it in the dream, it definitely didn't look anything like that person, mm. or do anything that person does. So I feel like he's still got that thing. So I guess, kind of my goal for Zig at this point, as opposed to fix Nyx, as opposed to fix his how he v sees Nyx currently. Hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, like, maybe, um, oh, how would you word that? There's a, a wording I was thinking of about, like, re-establishing your relationship with uh, yeah. Nyx Five. Style. Coming to terms as well with yeah. the fact that he does seem to be something different and apparently has died in the process, so. Yeah. Also, you know, like actually finding out or being told that he committed, well, well overhearing SK say he committed suicide and saying they're going, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I guess uh, uh, reconnecting, re. I think reconnecting with Nick is my biggest thing. Reconnecting I'd with Nick. I'd say, Nyx. like, reconcile is probably the best way to put it. Reconcile with Nick is maybe a good way to put it because. Nyx hasn't really said much to Zig. Mm -hmm. And I like that because what is going to be in Nyx's head regarding what Zig did to Alice originally? Because, mm -hmm. yeah, granted through some mystical fucking jank that Nyx pulled off Alice is back or is she? Right? Because she's different. So yeah, it's going to be interesting, I think, seeing them chat. But obviously, maybe I have to get a bit of privacy away from Escape before that chat happens. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, so yeah, be interesting to see how that uh, kind of turns out. What about a? Uh, let me go back to the goals just now. Sorry. So, so um, what what we're looking at here? So reconcile with Nix, and then you've also put down seek the crew's forgiveness. So seek crew's forgiveness, right? I mean, I feel like the elevator scene kind of covered two people for the most part. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, I mean, Nix is the only person that I've really not. <laughs> yeah. Had a chat with about murdering Alice. Because <laughs> Alice is obviously we had the chat about. Her. Oh, she Alice was like, well. wait, I was murdered. What? So I play. guess I guess like I guess at that point the both those things kind of are just the same goal at that point. Well, yeah, I think um, we just delete off the word cruise, don't we? Um, and it's just Nix's. Just reconcile with Nix, basically. No? So reconcile with Nix, seek forgiveness. Nix and seek forgiveness. 
Yeah, because obviously... Change it from a slash to and. Yeah, because obviously for him... Even if Nyx ultimately decides that he doesn't need forgiveness, mm. then it's still up to Zig whether Zig feels he needs to be forgiven. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're very different. Yeah, yeah, um, So it's us as players can discuss how that progresses for the story as opposed yeah. to what the characters think. But yeah, I would say that's a good uh, adjustment to that. Uh, what about Zora? Yeah, I'll be right back. I've kept the party safe while on Absalom, right? But they kind of know on Absalom anymore. <laughs> yeah, you were kind of not anywhere for a while there. <laughs> uh, I can, yeah, I can see... Oops. I oh, hello there. again. I <laughs> unmuted myself and then, like, accidentally clicked as I was moving. This is this is a little hint for you kids. Don't, don't use your mouse. Just, just hockey shit. Anyway, um... I can definitely see an argument that that's a complete objective then. Mm-hmm. I'd say so. With you, like, I yeah. wouldn't see why not. It, it, obviously, you could say, oh, well, we're not out of danger, but we're out of that particular dangerous situation. Yeah, yeah, There's I'd... always going to be another one, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say that's a. That's completed, yeah. Yeah. We need to think, to think about new ones, mind you. So, because all I can do right now is eat energy bars. It's absolutely... <laughs> well, so let's move that down to the completed list. So copy, paste it down. And then we'll try and get an idea. Because obviously there are, there is stuff that Zora can be working on. It's just not necessarily stuff that you can work on immediately, right? But mm -hmm. that's the whole point of having a happen to spur people on to help achieve your goals. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. So what do you want Zora to do next? Like literally, what is what is the next scene or achievement you want Zora to put under his belt? Hmm. And it's not like setting up energy bars. It's obviously what's next for your crew, right? I mean, maybe that is his aspiration. Maybe he just wants to just chill for the rest of his life and eat energy bars. <laughs> just, just retire him, <laughs> make a new character. <laughs> it's just I'm done, lads. I eat some energy bars for the rest of my life. He's not really good. Everybody, get off my ship now. Point. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's in a trippy state right now. Mm -hmm. um, don't know. Um, I mean, I guess if you'd like to like progress the overall arching goal right now, which I'm not entirely sure what it is because there's about twenty different goals. Well, that's it. Like, what? Well, like, um, but this is this is the time where you, as a player, discuss what you want to do with Zora, right? So, uh -huh. what do you want Zora to pursue? What's the next thing? Is it set up a base somewhere? Is it fix the ship? Is it get a new ship? Is it kill Zig? Is I it, mean, you it know, probably is go treasure hunting? Ship repaired right? in the grand scheme of things. Um, right, so that's a, that's, a, that's a step you can start working on, right? Because yeah. that just involves getting to somewhere, then making arrangements, and then getting the ship repaired, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's a goal you could write down. Uh, do you know what I mean you could have a, you know, get my cosmic bearings, you know, with what the fuck's going on? Because, yeah, you're right, there is a lot of quests up in the air at the moment, or at least a lot of, uh, like, galactic marbles floating around. Do you know what I mean? It's just about deciding which ones you want to pursue. I guess, um, yeah, I guess get this ship prepared. I was going to say something about, like... But I don't even know about that in character. Well, you've got your acquire your skittermander that you wanted as well. <laughs> <laughs> the Tweken skittermander. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's his name, Tweken. Whatever, <laughs> 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 uh, there's a thing, it would become a thing. That will be the thing. Tweken the skittermander. Yeah. So. Token skittermander. What's the. Uh, yeah. I'll get, I'll do just ship prepared now because I'm nice and vague enough, my, uh, it's vague enough, like, if you know what I mean, because I was going to say so about Hamani, but I mean, my character they, they doesn't even know that, and like, we might not even get our ship prepared after them, so. Yeah, but well, keep I in mind, guess, your like, goals aren't about you as a character, it's you as a player, for hmm. your character, so. It's like when you say, oh, my character doesn't know that. It doesn't matter what your character knows for the, the goals. It's about what you know as Nico, you know? Uh, I guess 
Well, that'll do, right? I quite have parts to fix the ship. Somehow. Because I'm not going to be able to fix the ship. Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and like I think you'd be smart enough to the ships beyond even Nix 5's ability solely. You would need like a fucking shipyard. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know. It's like... Sorry, but yeah. <laughs> I okay, guess. right, so I'll change that to a sla quite a part slash way to fix the ship. There we go. Yeah, and so that's uh I would say get the ship fixed is the goal as opposed to acquire a way to fix it, because going, ah, there's definitely a way to fix the ship. Yes, I think getting the ship fixed. Mm -hmm. Regardless of method. Yeah. I've uh, control Z, Control Z. Okay, got it. thank God. I just yep. started to clean stuff there. Yep, I noticed. We all, we all saw it. <laughs> control Z, is that how you're fixing the ship? <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> Maybe a good option, right? But yeah, I would say that's a definitely valid, you know? Undo it, undo it! No. I don't know why I said it in Arnie's. That's fine. No, next five. Yes. 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 It's happening. Yes. Um, <laughs> See if he's way for <laughs> I'm going to consider this a success of sorts. Yeah, I would say that's a half success on that. Uh, the first half of that goal, yeah. I would say that you haven't... You uh, you've not. <laughs> As you edit that. Uh, you can remove the save waifu down. Um, yeah, she is safe. I think we'll make a new goal. Hmm. So what's the what's the new thoughts? What does Alex want to see next do? What's next? Um, Is it <laughs> rally forces against Aspis? Is it no. kill SK? <laughs> <laughs> um, Possibly. <laughs> it's tempting. It's tempting. Um. Now keep in mind, she was very friendly when she came on board. And then all yeah, of a sudden, when she found out, obviously Nyx doesn't necessarily know this, but when she found out, well, I think you were in the cockpit at the time. Were you? Were you not? I don't remember. You were, maybe you were in the engine room. But I remember uh, the part where she found out that Himani drank. Yeah, drank I was in the engine room for that. Yeah, like, so our mood definitely shifted at that point. <laughs> and she took it out on poor me, who wasn't there to know why. <laughs> Flashback to the vest captain being smacked into the wall, trashing whatever <laughs> was behind it, which was his seat. Um, it's like, yeah, she definitely took it out on a few people. <laughs> but I don't know why. And it, I should remain that way. Yeah. Um, so, so, so what's yeah. next? What's next for next? What's next for next? Because, I mean, you've got a bunch of avenues now, right? So you've got all the original personal stuff going on with Nix in the first place, mm -hmm. right? His own agendas in the background, the pilgrim stuff. You've then got... Mm. This is where all the other players raise an eyebrow. And then you've got all the the stuff like you're not enjoying the Aspis stuff, right? So you've got that as an, an ongoing thing. Uh, you've got the ship as an ongoing thing. You've got your relationship with Zig as a thing. You've got your new relationship with Alice and that experience, that entire weird existential moment. Um, mm -hmm. You've got the changes you've both been through. Um... So yeah, you've got a bunch of avenues you've you can explore. You've got query to explore if need be as well. Yeah. Um, and a distinct lack of him in the white space, you know. Mm hmm. So I think it's because of all those things. I think some of them, like the pilgrim thing, is ongoing. Fixing the ship, captain's kind of obviously on that. Mm hmm. Wow. Um, the Zig thing mm -hmm. uh, is kind of in his court, I think. I'm starting you know, to feel though that get the ship fixed might be part of goal. Yeah, that's probably goal. Yeah, well, we've, sure. we've not really had a main goal for a while. We've kind of been working through individual goals for quite a bit. It's true. Mm -hmm. it's true. Like, unless you've got, like, do you have a personal goal you want Zora to be doing instead? I, I don't. Right? It's very setting. I would need to think on it. But. I mean, 
Because I mean, oh, I'm feeling like it is more like a group goal that they all get the ship fixed and a personal one. I mean, it's obviously a personal one as well. Um, it is the captain's ship. So that's the thing. It's more to do with like personal focus. Like at the moment, we know that obviously Lyco cares more about say finding a new source of information than he does about getting the ship fixed. Purely from Colin wanting that to be his goal. Do you know what I mean? But you've also got the get the ship fixed as your goal, so it's not like you're going to miss out on achieving that as such if you at least work on it. And keep in mind, you having it as Zora's goal means you're going to make as Nico. You're going to focus on Zora being like, right guys, I need you to do this, I need you to do that, I need you to do this. And you'll get the ship fixed, right? You you, you captain your crew to make everything happen. Whereas that's your focus as Nico. But within that, Lyco might be like, right, cool, I'll go and do that, but I'm going to do it with the, you know, the Barai settlement. So I'll go and check if they've got parts. Cool. Okay. And that's Colin using his goal to, you know, still follow Captain's orders, but still yeah. seek out his... Do- you see why the goal system, I think, is quite good for no, no, you guys driving enough. this? That's fine. That's fine but, but keep in mind, we'll do the goal conversation. we still gone with a party goal thing as well. I thought like, we'll end up... So. Well, um, but keep in mind that all of these goals are party goals. All of them. Right, because the party are involved in them. User is, you know, they're all particles from a, a vague yeah. sense of understanding. But like the the drive of that, like we'll we'll review this at the start of the next session as well, as we do. And if mm. you've obviously thought of something you want to change it to for the session, carry on. Um, but doing goals at the end of the session for me gives me time to write for them. Yeah, for something the next session. Do you know what I mean? Which is good. Uh, also, who knows where you're even going to end up now, right? Because SK, as she said to uh, Nix, like, it doesn't really seem like you are going to Akaton. Um, like, we ain't going to Akaton anymore. Like, with or without her intervention, you know? So, uh, yeah. Interesting. Right, so we've got find new source of Barai information. Take it, Colin, you're still, you, we're locked in on that. Still, follow up on that. Mm-hmm, yeah. I got reconcile and seek forgiveness with a uh, you Callum for a uh, Zig. Mm-hmm. Then we've got get the ship fixed uh, for Nico, and then we've got understand the white space for a uh, next five. So that's kind of your your focus at that point. Good. Mm-hmm. Right. I like it. And we all know the secret goal to the game is acquire that Skittermander ally. That's what we all know. Yeah. Uh, right, okay, I so guess. <laughs> yeah, we'll review now, because uh, I'm just going to get rid of all this uh, nonsense at the top here. Mm. Oh God. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> Huggish or bad? That horrible, horrible text. <laughs> God, how I hate it, that red and green. Oh, it's so mad <laughs> in the eyes, it's this great. Is- it's so beautiful. It's so Who hot. needs drugs it's when you so have beautiful. Alex's spreadsheet fonts and Oh, colour. you sound just like my boss. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's do our review then, and we'll wrap up. So, let's start with uh, Nico. Okay, okay. Um, I enjoyed... I enjoyed and didn't enjoy SK. Right, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> what um, was to enjoy you know, or I mean, not enjoy? I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy, I enjoy escape, but Darren, she had difficult, to, difficult to deal with. Difficult. To, uh, she's a privileged woman. I'm just, I'm just very pleased you chose to tell her about him and drinking, the, uh, the queen. It was something I was waiting on. Like, I really hope they tell her he drank the queen. <laughs> I kind of had no reason to lie. To be mm. honest with you, I mean, like I said, to us, I, like. Yeah. Well, it was more to see if she it came up in nervous. conversation, right? It was more to see if it actually came up in conversation than anything else. Because that's um, not just something you casually bring up, right? Oh, and by mm. the way, that black dragon guy, he just drank the queen. Uh, yeah, it's a bit weird. It's a bit weird. But, um, yeah, I enjoyed, enjoyed that. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, I enjoyed Zig in his... Um, quest for reconciliation <laughs> so far. <laughs> uh, Which so far has sit in the pilot chair, push buttons, get angry at SK, 
Go hide up Nix's back, get angry at SK, go eat chocolate bars. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's good. I think uh, that's a solid start. Like, come yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you did. You did go and get the the, the second box of chocolate bars. <laughs> I did. I went up and I I got the box. That's enough to forgive anyone. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, what about you, Alex? Oh. <laughs> oh. What could I possibly mention? Yeah, right. Because uh, it was quite quite next five late this this week actually. Weirdly. Uh, <laughs> 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 yep, nothing of major importance. No, nope, not but at all. It was good to get the the nice new paint job, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, no, that was heavy into Nick Psych. Yeah, stuff. I honestly uh, didn't actually expect to go as deep as we did in that uh, I, first half, but it was good. Uh, yeah, I'm glad the saves didn't work because mm. it kind of meant that we kind of had to get more into the fluff. Yeah, and it was where things went. It was good again because, as I said to you many times before, it, the rules just seem to go the way the story prefers, and it's mm -hmm. I love that because it means that while there was no written Nix must achieve this to get out of this thing because mm -hmm. it's just not my style, it was more a case of let's explore this together, and yeah, yeah, it is interesting because obviously what I loved was. You and Alice been like, right? We're in here. What, what is this place? And you've been like, oh, cool. Like we've been here before. And she's like, what have we? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. that, that seems to, this seems to be all on you, man. And then she just starts <laughs> shouting door, and then <laughs> it switches to the part where you start shouting that. <laughs> it was good. I enjoyed. Yeah, that. No, it's definitely one of those things where it's almost as a player, I could see where a potential solution lied, mm. but you don't want to be messed with it, and you don't want to. You let the character kind mm -hmm. of inhabit that space for a while. Yeah, because as the player, you know where the light switch is, but like as the character, sometimes it's more interesting to let them stumble in the room, right? That was exactly how it felt. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. um, and it kind of let me start talking more about the things that really interest me about Android psychology. Yeah, because it's like there's a lot of depth to Nix that we got to see tonight. Um, mm -hmm. Which again for me is great for for character development and for writing, um, but like getting almost Nick's just entire stance really on the situation in general, right? We got yeah, which is the I'm not actually okay with a lot of the shit that we've done. I need to mm -hmm. reconcile that, you know. So Nick's has a bit of a journey ahead of him. Yeah, and the world is messy in a way that it perhaps isn't, or at least it comes naturally to people who are so easily part of it mm -hmm. where it's kind of being built for a purpose no oh, definitely and then clearly being outside that purpose it's almost more troubling but mm -hmm. then that might also help drive Nix into achieving certain specific goals of his own because it might help you be like right we are a chaotic element and we need some order and maybe we should have like like why don't we build resources up why don't we have our own base you know like why are we always reliant on other people like that's how you have ended up needing people, right? Because mm -hmm. user in chaos, much like user adrift in the drift, you know? It is very much a user rudderless. Yeah. Lots of parallels. Mm. That's why it was a good title as well. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah, adrift. But aside no. from that, yeah. Yes. Um, I enjoyed, obviously, Zig suffering again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Callum, it's just, you play them so well. It's fine. So. It's so. fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's nice seeing him trying to make sense of the situation. Uh, yeah, it's good. Somewhere lost in the guilt. Um, I enjoyed as well. Is it Lyco's kind of political paranoia? Mm. A lot. I, like, <laughs> I actually really I, enjoyed I, his I, political paranoia as well. Like. It was, yeah, it was yeah, understandable. Was definitely one of the things but, I was going to bring up. Just. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> it's pronounced it query. <laughs> really valid. It was really very valid. I agree. It was almost like it's the positive aspect of the pragmatic approach, hmm. which I mentioned. <laughs> that, yeah, his mind doesn't go to um, anything, you know, kind of. 
yeah. a philosophical anything. It's somebody's going to take this opportunity to screw us over mm-hmm. yeah. or screw yeah. the pack worlds over. Um, yeah, it's a pair of that kind of thing. Where... It's like you can't know, like a vacuum has to be filled. Like that's, you yeah. know. And he understands that. Mm-hmm. That was really good to see him explaining that. Almost like, yeah, he was the first one to click into the big game that's going to be afoot. Yeah, like don't look at the explosion, look where everybody else is not looking type vibe, like what, who, who's doing their works in the shadows type vibe. It's very um, Cloak and Dagger, very Conspiracy Craig. You know, it's, yeah, it's perfect. This is yeah. when Lyco's in his room yeah. at night on the Conspiracy Craig forums, <laughs> posting under <laughs> Top Fan. <laughs> <laughs> there yeah. we go. We got topical. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah and good. obviously the captain with his typical veski in the with uh, what, SK? Yeah, pissing SK off. Yeah, yeah, it's good. That was. Uh, yeah, you can always you can always rely on Zora to piss off SK. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait for us to get a high enough level and fight it out properly. I mean, again, I still stand by that first interaction between Zora and SK, where they both went to like boot each other. Um, <laughs> there was there was really not much in the the dice results. There really wasn't. Yeah. And I, yeah. God, how much of a different like dynamic would this game have had for their relationship <laughs> had he booted her into the wall, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, that was a. Uh, only Doshkos don't like. They aren't like uh, perfect, you know, pinning devices. Sadly. Uh, unlike her mm. weird white blades of non-damaging. <laughs> Maybe if I turned on like two blades, you know, and like just no, like the against the, the neck, <laughs> against that. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Oh dear! I can't wait for your fucking like scared man to apprentice to show up. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Obsidian Star. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I would give you six <laughs> knives. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Um, right, what about Lyco? Or Colin, six I should say. Uh, what about Colin? Um, well, uh, can I just say thank you guys for, for, for noticing the the sort of thing with the, uh, oh, you know, what, who's going to make their, their power play? Can I, uh, I was <laughs> very pleased with getting that opportunity to express um, you know, it, it, it's it's the cop thinking. That's mm-hmm. that's what I really enjoy. Like getting to plumb those little bits of the character that maybe aren't as close to the surface as they could be because the situations he's in now sort of don't necessarily always uh, lean to that. But and that was a lot of fun for me. Um, I, I'll, I'll try and do as much of that as I can, like with interacting with um, Jackos. That's always like golden opportunity for it because. When he wanted to explain it, he used terms. He was like, "Right, she's a beat cop, basically." Ah, the gang, the gang's underneath, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was that was a great fun, and I'm, I'm thank you for noticing, guys, because I was really pleased with this over. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed the uh, the sort of bizarre transformation of our android and our robot into an android. Mm-hmm. Um, it was quite interesting uh, getting to see how the different members of the crew sort of reacted to that and, and how they reacted to different members of the crew. Mm-hmm. Um, some good moments with Alice this session, actually, which was fun for, for Lyco. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's interesting because it's sort of counterintuitive given that he does... Ca- I suppose to an extent he probably sees her as slightly less human or has done. Mm. Than some other members of the crew do, um, but he's always maintained a fairly friendly relationship with her, and I think this is a sort of extension of that. Um, yeah, he's always had quite good banter, the two of you. Yeah, um, he does like her. I mean, he, he he goes out his way to sort of compliment her here, partly because he's trying to be nice, partly because he's sincere. Like he, she is a good-looking woman, and like who is not above making that sort of comment. Mm-hmm. He's also not the sort of person who who immediately thinks. Maybe that's not the best way to compliment someone. Mm-hmm. To go for the looks. He's kind of immersed in a world where maybe that was a kind of go-to compliment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm imagining now a 1930s private dick. Um, a, a, a shadow approaches their room door and 
you know, you can see their name backwards on it. Uh, anyway, something yeah. about a dame, yada yada. Yeah, the uh, femme fatale walks into the, uh, you exactly. know, exactly. The private. But I'm imagining yeah. a sort of bantery, you know, cops over drinks and what have you, kind of environment whereby, um, you you might get a bit more of that chat, and 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 I think like the idea that she as well maybe doesn't have some of the social so, social niceties and doesn't go you know oh, why are you commenting my appearance um well keep in mind she was so made by like realistically probably a bunch of scientists on a space station that were lonely nerds, right, fucking nerds. <laughs> right? <laughs> so they probably made her look very pretty for a reason i liked l- mm. sort of looming around outside the door and i also getting later going in to see Nicks and just sort of getting a feel of what's changed about him. Hmm. So that was a fun little interaction because there was kind of a sort of tension under the surface. And mm. uh, yeah, again, I it's more like think- that was deliberate on your part, but I definitely felt in mine that I was kind of trying to. Well, we spoke about it before and like wrap ups, like about the frustrate, like the underlying frustration that seems to be harder for like Nix to suppress, and it does seem to have been this evolution path that he's on mm. that he's just like. No, I actually do put up, Why do I keep letting these things just happen around me? And it's getting to the point where, was it the good man goes to war vibe, isn't it? Like, we're definitely getting vibes of that um, from Nyx. Mm-hmm. Especially with when, obviously, we're talking about, like, the inner thoughts of Nyx and the, the psyche, the psyche eval that we gave him this session. Yeah. Um, you've got all... Yeah. Like yeah, that was cool, actually. I'm sorry, I should have said, like, I like when people get to do a little bit of a motive rant in a way that makes sense in universe hmm. we got a little bit of that from from next five today which was fun yeah that was cool the inner monologue of uh or the inner like worries and thoughts and like opinions we of definitely got a lot of his perspective um and and i think that it's at the right moment mm-hmm. for us to start maybe seeing a bit more of that come to the surface mm-hmm. well that's it because like, as we we're saying like next five's had a, a couple of moments where it's been like <laughs> I am annoyed by this situation, but I'm Nick's five, so I'll hide that, or I'll just, I'll just that won't bug me. I'll just ignore that and deal with the problem that I like dealing with because it's a problem and I can fix it. Now, like, sorry, um, Nick's five is starting to see what the problem actually is, and it's grander. <laughs> you know, that does seem to be. All the humans are the pro. No, it doesn't. It's. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, but it is. It's the, it's the chaos, right? <laughs> Yeah, and there was some a bit of tension there. I think kind of once everyone started crowding around, it's like, no, I need to get back to back to my job and back to what I was doing. And what's funny um, for me just, is the similarities of what you would normally be frustrated with is what you were frustrated with S Kate for, which was her <laughs> trying to focus on the problem <laughs> and being pestered by people. Yeah, and be like, no, let me know, let me know, let me help, and she's like, <laughs> you can't help, you don't get this. This is something I have to work on. It's, I can't even explain it to myself, never mind you. And then <laughs> she tries to explain it, and you're like, I know less now. <laughs> it's like you're, you're talking about 4 and 5D, there's only three of them. Like, you, we're not, it's not good, it's not good, SK. You need to go back, come back two dimensions, please. Come back two, do the maths here. <laughs> and she's like, no, but we need to wrap the math around the fourth and fifth dimension. And you're like, that was no. Getting to see the shoe another foot, you're right. That is mm-hmm. a, like I enjoyed yeah. that. That was fun for me because uh, it is one of those more things where you get to go. This is what it's like trying to work with Nix, by the way. <laughs> and it's just the fact that she's hyper focused, right? She's pissed off at the fact that this black dragon has access to a vault now. So it seems to be important to her. So, like, what does that even mean, right? She wants to get to a vault door. What does that mean? Where are they, right? I believe Nix has been to one before, right? So. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite interesting. I believe Zig has also been to one before. Zig has uh, definitely been to one before. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. Like Zig's been s- inside the vault, so mm. yeah, it's it is interesting. So yeah, SK definitely has a lot going on herself. Do you know what I mean she's <laughs> high high strung currently, um, tightly tightly wound. But yeah, no, it's good. It is good to see these things, especially when characters like Nix Five who don't often get a chance to emote. Or do an alarm monologue. Like we get a lot of Lyco because Lyco is an expressive character for being 
a very easy template to follow on, which is the the, the cop, right? The ex cop. Mm-hmm. Um, also, kind of surly. I've had a life and don't mind taking others now. Um, kind of character, as well. Like we've got like a very strong visual of that. You've got the like the strong war gorilla that is a uh, Zora. Strong war. <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> you know you've got like the kind of naive that life isn't what I thought it would be. Zig, right? But like Nyx is a harder mm. one to express because of the design of Nyx, and it is mm. good for me to like see moments where we actually get to express that and it's another reason why Alice is a fun character because Alice is usually the one that ends up bringing that side of Nyx out that or Zig usually through hijinks um, <laughs> which is good and, and yeah, uh, if I get a chance next session I'm going to sort of have a, a wee interaction with her because she was very you know supportive in his dazed moment mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. Alice is obviously uh, always been very friendly with him but it was it was appreciated in his part but I didn't immediately go in and I forgot to do it kind of mm-hmm. when we were at the table I kind of meant to do that and then you, were, you went on and I was just not thinking to do it mm-hmm. um, sorry to interject there no, it's, to it's right. no it's good and it's the same as um, when obviously I was talking about the flash of what Zora technically should have seen when walking into the cockpit being Emily with Zig mm-hmm. right but then obviously I just only thought of it by the time Lyco got there um, but it's moments like that where it's it is like I don't mind moving these things around narratively, storyboarding them. Uh, anything else to add? Count. Well, we would. No, no. Count. Count. Let's get our zig on. <laughs> I get your zig on. Um, <laughs> I am really enjoying the zix part. <laughs> This little little story that right okay no right as as a like an observer on the outside I'm really enjoying it mm. <laughs> as Zig I'm really not <laughs> mm. yeah um like, as Callum it's fun to explore this right but like as Zig it's kind of yes kind of sore <laughs> just really shitty <laughs> I I do you know what? I think there's there's very little in this session that I wouldn't mention mm. um yeah in this bit I think I, I think a lot of just it was a lot of just good stuff happened as in enjoyable um role playing events and just story bits and everything um trying to think of things that haven't been mentioned before yeah quite difficult um yeah. i'm i'm enjo- I, I really enjoyed th- that just that that moment of hmm who are you yeah <laughs> <laughs> the, wait a minute you're not the faces i wanted to see <laughs> Yeah, that's good. No, um, I re- like for me, yeah, because yeah, like it's good that it was Zig that got to be there first. Yeah, because right, yeah, that was perfect. Zig's like moment, right? And that's why I really liked see opening the session. Originally, I was gonna just open in the in, in the white space with a uh, Alice and a uh, Nick, but I thought no, I prefer the idea of opening with S Kate being like, okay, so why is everything broke? What the fuck? Like that Romeo and Juliet moment of seeing yeah. like Nyx collapsed over Alice and her being like, "Oh God, no! <laughs> like <laughs> the ship's supposed to be." He said to guard the ship, "The he's just killed himself. That he's dismantled all the escape pods and the engines fucked. What is this barge of the dead?" Um, so it's nice for that moment. So obviously she was left in a high stress situation. Nice that he's managed to rescue. Shakos, nice that Zig got to have his moment being like, holy fuck, who are you people? Captain, please help. <laughs> um, yeah, there was a lot of good. A lot of good. I think the main thing about this session is that it's just a lot of this session is set up a lot of kind of excitement for what's going to happen and how things are going to progress. Um, yeah, because that was the end of uh, chapter 5. Yeah, it's just it's bonkers. <laughs> Because yeah, this is on to chapter six next, guys, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, which is why I really yeah, like the, the title as well, because Adrift is a really good like almost season finale, if you will, if we call chapter seasons. Um, it does make it super yeah. interesting to be like, exactly. what happens with our heroes next time? It da, would da, da. actually be a really good mid-season finale. Mm-hmm. You know, the sort of series that have like a summer break kind of thing. Well, that's it. And I don't know if MD actually pays attention to it, but I actually name chapters as well. I don't know if you've ever uh, like paid attention to that. But like this chapter was called Substructure um, for Chapter 5, which I think 
is kind of fitting because it then it kind of covers obviously. Well, it starts with I'll see you in Absalom, then choose, then you won't believe the day I've had. You came for me, and then a drift, and that's our sessions that we had. And I think substructure covers that pretty well because it's kind of about a going into the boils to go rescue Shakos, um, b <laughs> getting into the engine and making it go places it shouldn't go. Um, into the substructure of the universe, getting beneath Nix's skin, you know, Aww. like we got there's a lot of uh, exploration that we did with everything in all aspects, with characters and places. So yeah, it's exciting. It's also interesting to see when things go wrong. Where do people want to go, right? Because you've got obviously <laughs> Zora did mention. Well, we could always go to the Viscarium, you know. <laughs> and that, like, while it might have been a bit of a joke, it, it would be something on Zora's mind, right? Um, you've obviously got Zig being like, I don't really want to go back to the sun right now. Um, no, it's definitely a bit soon for that. Yeah. And, um, but that's interesting I because... what you're going to find there. Yeah, right. Um, it's just, no, it's interesting. It's interesting to see what what happens because I guess we'll we'll find out in Chapter 6. Uh, anything else to add, Zig? Um, not really, just that, you know, that I think everyone was kind of really on point with their characters today. Yeah. No, I, think, I, th- I think everyone kind of brought their A-game and I was like, ooh. That was definitely good. I enjoyed it. Always do. It's a good group. And yes, I'm definitely, I'm looking forward to what comes out of this. <laughs> mm. uh, me too. I'm looking forward to Chapter 6 a lot. To be honest, um, can't wait to see what It will be good. Uh, also, for everyday use of leveled up, enjoy being level seven. Uh, Ooh, what I'm doing <laughs> is with the goals, you have completed. I heard seven. eighteen. Did you say eighteen? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yep. Well, you can get eighteen XP if you want. Oh, okay. And then. I'll just use you on the old XP system then. So everything you kill, you XP for. So, <laughs> there you go. Just me, though. Yeah, everybody else can work on the goal system. Yeah. So you have seven goals completed so far, right? Complete me another eight goals between you guys <laughs> as a group, and I'll give you level eight. Cool. And let's see how that works for cool. a change. I like this. I like this system. This Sounds good. good. Um, yeah, we'll see how that works, and we'll probably just arbitrarily change that. As we go, but that's as because cool. these are five just now. We'll jump, jump up to six, then jump up to seven. Um, obviously, from an inventory point of view, you just can't make any changes yet, um, unless you're Colin and you want to spend money on biological upgrades. Um, mm. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it's maybe an interesting <laughs> reason why. But yeah, so. Yeah, I think that's everything I've got to add as well, to be honest. I thought it was a great session, guys. I always love any chance to explore fucking existentialness, let's face it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's always good mm. fun. I'm not going to do most of my <laughs> levelling up tonight, but I will do this <laughs> hit the level up. Yeah. I'll, and, uh, I'll level myself up to see what the number so machine shoots at me. But yeah. 63, 55. Man. It was a fun session, guys. Thank you again for playing. Always a pleasure. Thank you for running. Yes. No, thank you thank very you. much for running. That was really good. Indeed. And I think uh, the earlier time actually made my brain work better. I am so fucking tired now. Mm. <laughs> I'm been... tired now, but mm. I started half well, but I got tired at yeah. the end. Yeah, it is, it's, um, yeah. It is a bit long. It's just a shame we can't, like, say, manage a five till nine slot consistently, alas. It just, mm. I, I, just, I just can't, sadly. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, goodbye, everybody who listened. Thank you for making the journey with us. Uh, keep listening, because, yeah, we're going to keep playing. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.